Welcome to a new series on the Fantasy Football Show. Woo! Where I'm going to mix in psychology with fantasy football. Now, before you ask what the hell do you know about psychology, Smitty, I have an undergrad in psych. So I do have some knowledge on the topic, knowledge that I want to share with you guys and kind of like intermix into a lot of the content that I do because in trade negotiation, there is a lot of psychology involved and it's a very interesting topic. And if you understand the different layers of psychology involved in negotiating in general, you can make better trades. You can be a better fantasy football owner. So this is a new series we're doing in this particular episode of the Psychology 101 series. We're gonna go over the order of questioning. The order of the questions that you ask your negotiating opponent can determine and, and reshape the entire direction of your conversation and your trade negotiation. So let's get into order of questioning and how it relates to fantasy football and how you can better make trades in your league using psychology to back up your tactics. Intro. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. Take a lap. Let me paint a little picture for you uh, and intermix the order of questioning, how you go about asking certain questions at certain times and how you unveil them one at a time. The order of those things matter. And we'll mix in the foot in the door phenomenon where you're basically putting your foot in the door to accomplish a goal. And that foot wedged in the door is gonna give you an advantage of getting into that door. Whereas if you just try to walk straight in, you get denied. So here's an example, Bob from accounting, you know he's interested in going to the 2020 NFL draft. Let's pretend that happened in Vegas and we were planning a trip for it. Or Bob wanted to potentially go, but he didn't have any real concrete plans, didn't know anybody going. You go to Bob, you lean up against Bob's cubicle and you say, Bob, I'm going to Vegas for the NFL draft. You want to accompany me in my vehicle next to me, commanding the radio as we ride into Vegas, ready to watch the NFL draft unfold, watching all of our favorite college players find their way into the NFL. Bob, what do you think of that? Join me on this venture. Bob says, just ride with you. Bob, I've got a hotel room covered. I've got the gas. I'm already going, Bob. I just need a passenger to command that radio as we cruise into Vegas ready to watch football drafting. Bob says, I'm in. Foot in the door. You call Bob a week later and say, Bob, change your plans, man. The car is on the fritz. I need you to use your vehicle. I'll still pay for gas. The hotel room's already there. The players are still on their way. No COVID exists in this environment. Bob, are you still down? to drive your vehicle. Bob's already committed mentally, he's excited. What's the difference, I gotta drive my car now? It's a small price to pay. That foot is already wedged in the door. Bob's already mentally committed. Bob says, yeah, let's do it. A week goes by, you call Bob up and you say, Bob, change your plans, man. I don't know that I can afford all the gas. Some things came up. My mom had to get a bunion removed from her heel and I had to fork over 500 of my own cash dollars to help them remove that son of a bee right off her heel. Do you think you could split the gas with me on the way up to this Vegas trip? Bob says, damn it, I'm already going. I don't have any friends. Let's do it. Foot in the door even further. So you're sliding your body halfway through the door at this point, not just wedging your foot in it. And Bob's committed, Bob's excited, Bob can't turn back. Your foot has been in the door and and it's going even further into that door. And in a final call of disappointment, you call Bob up and you say, Bob, not only are you driving, Bob, not only are you paying half the gas, Bob, that hotel room that I had on lock is now gone. Will you split the hotel room with me, Bob says. At this point, why not? My point in this story is, had you gone to Bob at accounting, leaned up against Bob's cubicle and said, Bob, why don't you drive to Vegas this coming month? Why don't you pay half the gas, Bob? Why don't you pay half the hotel and make this, this trip a lot cheaper for me? What do you say? You want to go to Vegas and watch the NFL draft? Bob would have probably told you, no. Why? Because you didn't use the foot in the door phenomenon and ease your way into the conversation. But if you go poking around, you wedge your foot in different doorways, you might find yourself in a position that by the time you get done talking to Bob, by the time you get done negotiating with Bob, He's in a different place mentally than he would have been had you just slapped down the, the note saying, trade me Kareem Hunt. 
So we've got foot in the door, phenomenon explained. Now we're gonna get to order of questioning. Okay, so here are Bob's running backs, and to keep things simple, we will say that you wanna go after Kareem Hunt. He's your target, okay? So we're gonna talk about how to go about asking for Kareem Hunt. If you just right out of the gate say, hey Bob, can you give me Kareem Hunt? What do you want for Kareem Hunt? There's two things going on in this type of scenario. One, Bob either believes that he knows more about fantasy football or he believes that you know more about fantasy football. It's one or the other, and that's where Bob's perspective is gonna begin from. In the case where Bob feels that you know more about fantasy football, even if it's innate, even if he doesn't wanna admit it, but he, he truly believes you've got an edge on him for stuff, or you're always knowing who the best players are, or he's scared to trade with you, Bob's initial reaction is gonna be, what does he know that I don't, I'm not trading. I don't wanna be made a fool. Trade's off, trade's dead, negotiation is done. You screwed the pooch from the beginning because you went after what you wanted. You showed your cards, game over. In the other scenario, where Bob feels he knows more than you, he's gonna say to himself, I drafted so well, I've got this guy Kareem Hunt that I, I already believe in, he drafted him. He knows there's potential for Kareem Hunt to, to win a league because he's heard this stuff from probably Senior Smitty. So in this scenario, Bob's going, it's confirmation bias. Bob's saying, he wants Kareem Hunt, I drafted him. I did a damn good job, I'm not trading him. The same thing is kind of getting accomplished here by you going right after Kareem Hunt from the start, from the get-go, telegraphing your pass before you throw it. You drop back, you say, I'm going for Kareem Hunt. He knows what's going on. Don't telegraph your trade. Negotiation ended. You screwed the pooch no matter what perspective Bob is looking at this from, whether he knows more than you or you know more than him. The way you go after Kareem Hunt in either one of these scenarios, either perspective that Bob has, you acquire in his players from the top down. Bob, what do you want for Jacobs? Uh, he's my best player. It would take a lot. I'm not really interested in trading him. You've accomplished two things here. One, you're getting him to admit that his best player is Josh Jacobs. Now it is, or you could argue Eckler and him are tied, but you're getting him to admit that he has a better player than Kareem Hunt on his roster, and he does, but you need him to admit that. You need him to psychologically embed that in his brain as you work your way down his running back list. So you go, hey, what about Austin Eckler? I like I, I like Eckler almost as much as I like Chubb. Boom, you've just got Bob to admit that there are two players on his roster that he wants more than Kareem Hunt. Two players that he will not trade, and, and rightly so. But he, he needs to embed this in his mind. He needs to be he needs to be freshly reminded that Kareem Hunt is not his best running back on his roster. You need to devalue Kareem Hunt in his own mind. You need to rewire his own brain temporarily to say that Kareem Hunt is not the best player on my roster. You've just got him to confirm it and admit it twice. Okay, well, what about Mark Ingram? Now make sure you don't make offers you aren't willing to accept. Low ball him for Ingram. No, Ingram's my backup running back. I'm using him at flex. I think he's gonna have a big year. Okay, here's where people make the biggest mistake. Don't say Kareem Hunt's name. Make him say, Kareem Hunt's name. This is the oldest trick in the book. You make somebody else say the words out of their mouth. You make them make a positive statement for your purpose. What other running backs do you have, Bob? You don't say, Bob, will you trade Kareem Hunt? Bob, what other running backs will you trade? No. You say, Bob, well, what other running backs do you have? I don't know. I haven't looked, right? Cream Hunt isn't even on your mind at this point. That's the message you want in Bob's head, psychologically, subconsciously. Now Bob at this point is in a way trying to convince you that he has another player that's worthy of trading for and he's gonna offer his name. When Bob offers you his name psychologically, he's saying he's available. If Bob's response is, I have Cream Hunt but I'm not trading him, then you know that you're dead in the water anyway. No art of negotiation is going to help you get Cream Hunt if that if he's dead set on on keeping Hunt. But if he tells you, no, I do have another running back. It's Cream Hunt. He's psychologically setting himself up to being open-minded to trading Kareem Hunt. You're getting him to say no, 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 yes. He says, I got Cream Hunt. Your reaction is, well, um, what do you want for him? I'm not saying this will land you Cream Hunt. 
even nine times out of 10. I'm not saying that you will get cream hunt a majority of the time. Much depends on what that individual owner thinks about that player. Maybe he won't trade Browns players ever. He's a Browns homer. I don't know those details and I can't tell you this is gonna work with 100% certainty. What I can tell you is that if you follow this type of process, you're gonna be more likely to land your target than not. You're increasing the odds of pulling off a Kareem Hunt trade significantly because at this stage in the process, admit it, you feel like Kareem Hunt is not as valuable than when I started and, and before I broke down these other three running backs and broke down his lineup. I have made Bob think this is my fourth running back. This is the running back I had to bring up to even get him interested in trading for another running back that I had. It's like playing hard to get with the trade negotiation. He wants to prove to you that he has a fourth running back worthy enough of trading. And by doing that, by doing so, he's created a sense of being open-minded to trading Hunt. He's wanting at this point to talk you into wanting Hunt because then in a weird way, that's confirmation bias that he was right about Kareem Hunt and drafting Kareem Hunt. He wants to convince you that he's good enough to trade for and that might lead him down a path of getting rid of him when he wouldn't have at the onset of this uh, entire situation. That's Psychology 101, how to trade specifically around the foot in the door phenomenon and the order of questioning when you're trying to do a trade negotiation. Get ready for more Psychology 101 fantasy football segments. It's gonna be a big part of what I do moving forward. We're gonna do a lot of masterclass type stuff on trade negotiation, the art of fantasy football trading. Get ready, subscribe, follow, get on over to sleeperu.com to get your bold predictions, your rankings, Sleep, you, learn about it. And if you want to book me for your draft, heysmitty.com is where you can book me and have me draft with you on the phone so we can dominate your league. Top five running back. You're watching the Fantasy Football Show. Smitty.